All right, guys, screen printing. So screen printing is using a screen, a really fine mesh. Like I said, this used to be made of silk, but now it's polyester. Um, the mesh comes in a variety of uh, tightnesses, uh, weaves, so that some are a much higher, a much finer mesh, some are a much looser mesh. Um, depending on what you're printing on for mostly. So uh, for, for this, I'm using a hundred, 110, basically, uh, which I think is 110 strings per inch probably. The higher the number, the tighter the mesh. Um, normally I would use, because I'm printing on paper, I would actually use a, a tighter mesh, but because I'm using ceramic medium, using uh, underglaze for my ink, it's not as viscous as ink is, and it might be a little bit gritty, so I'm using one that's just a little bit looser. It's a little bit of an experiment, because the one thing that I wasn't able to find was whether or not, like, what mesh I needed to use. I have one that's extremely loose. It's a 24. It actually kind of looks like a tight window screen. I think that's going to be too loose to get the detail that I would like to have in some of these things. It all really depends on what you're doing. So you can draw directly on a screen uh, with a screen printing drawing medium. It's just basically you paint it on. You could mask off areas with tape. Uh, tape's a little difficult because when you go to get it off, sometimes you end up leaving residue behind on the screen. And these are reusable. So drawing medium works really well. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is a photo-based process. And the reason for that is that I can do my drawing on a piece of paper and get it just the way that I want it and then basically scan that, print it out in like a solid black and white and use that transparency to expose my screen. And that gives me the ability to work through my mistakes before I actually paint it onto my screen. So I'm using a photo-based emulsion. Uh, Speedball makes this. You have to buy this with a sensitizer, which makes it photosensitive. Um, once you have mixed your, your sensitizer in with your emulsion, you have a limited lifespan. It's not gonna last forever. This is from June, it's from 625. We keep this in the refrigerator so that it slows down that process. It's a airtight and light tight space. So it keeps it a little bit longer, but it's still not gonna last forever. They do sell this in much smaller quantities, like eight ounce containers, but that doesn't really suit uh, Micah because he's doing a lot of printing, so therefore that's not gonna work. So my first thing that I wanna do is I wanna coat this screen with this. And for that, I'm actually gonna use a tool that's made specifically for this, it's a screen coater. Let's see if I can get the lid off of this because it's been in there for a while. So I can do this, even though this is light sensitive, I can do this in a room that has light, um, natural light, which I do have in here, which is good for photographing, but not necessarily great for this. Let me get a little more of this on here. <laughs> Natural light, UV light is gonna make it cure a little faster, but I don't have, it's not gonna happen instantaneously. So I'm gonna do that. Oh my God, stop. It's been a while since I've done this. And I'm gonna coat both sides of this screen. So I'm gonna pull my screen coater over until my emulsion hits my screen. Let it get all the way down on the end here. And I'm just gonna kind of drag it up through. And then to the end. I'm gonna do it again. All the way over. Oops, it's a little bit globby. Let's see what I can do to clean that up. And then I'm gonna do it on the other side just to make sure. that it's good and coated. It's probably a little bit unnecessary. See a 
a little blob there. Let's scrape that bit off. I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. I definitely kind of It's a very satisfying sound, I gotta say. So I want it to be fully coated, but I don't want to have an excessive amount of this on there. So now I'm actually using my screen coater to uh, scrape the extra off. If you guys can still see. So scraping it off, letting gravity push it towards me, just tilting my little trough up. And then I'm going to put this in a, a light safe room to dry. So it's going to go in our bathroom. So my, my whole tripod fell and my camera got bumped onto slow-mo. So the last clip that I filmed, which luckily was not really important, was on slow motion. Uh, basically, I like took the time to clean out that uh, emulsion coater, the screen coater. And I took cleaned that out. I cleaned the spatula off that I used to scrape the what was left back in the jar and put the jar back in the fridge. Um, in the meantime, I have put the screen in our bathroom, closed the door, have a fan on low so that it helps speed up the drying process. But at this point, I'm gonna work on creating transparencies so that I can have that ready to uh, put, to basically expose to the screen once the screen is dry. So this is vegetable oil. Um, we have a piece of paper that Micah uses all the time for oiling up his images. So you can maybe see that a few of these, and I already did some. So these, some of these are printed out, like I just drew them on Adobe Sketch. So they're hand drawn, but printed. Can't get a hold of it. And then these were just Sharpie on white paper. Get a couple of blimps. Um, so I'm going to oil these to make them into transparencies. So on this, I'm just coating both sides of each of the images. I'm actually going to stack them on top of each other so that the next one soaks in the oil from the first one a little bit. Save myself some time. And then when I'm done coating all of them, I'm going to pull them apart go back, start to wipe them down with a paper towel to remove the excess oil. And I'm gonna check, make sure that there's no paper that looks like it's not translucent. And I think there was one on here that it hadn't quite soaked in completely and I end up re-oiling it just a little bit. And that's it. I can't really turn the light on for this, but you can see I have multiple images on the other side of this screen. And I've got to put stuff on top of this to make sure that that is pressed directly against my transparencies. And then I'm going to turn on this light table. It's just fluorescent bulbs and a piece of glass, basically, and expose it for 12 minutes. Your exposure is going to change based on what kind of light you're using. Um, Whether or not you are, uh, the, the, honestly, the age of your bulbs, the age of your emulsion, all of those things can change how long that is going to stay on. So just so you know. All right. So I almost forgot to record this. Um, I am spraying out my screen. So I've wet it slightly. It's down here towards the bottom of the bathtub. And now I'm going to actually start spraying it out. It's going to be really loud if I turn the water on. Okay, so it's kind of hard to shoot that without um, completely blocking the shot and, and find out what was going on. But basically, I sprayed out the screen. You have to spray it really, really thoroughly and make sure that it's clear. 
occasionally hold it up to the light and see if that has actually gone all the way through. So the areas that were blocked, that were black, will remain water soluble. And any area that was allowed to get the light, the light will harden that emulsion. So some of my, my one drawing that had like little tiny lines, and then um, when I printed it, I didn't bother to take it into Illustrator or anything and turn it into a vector drawing. And so when it printed, um, it got a little pixelated. Like, so the lines got even kind of smaller. And I think the light got around it just a little bit. And so some of that didn't wash out exactly. Um, but then some of those areas, there's uh, details. So like I did the photograph of Rosie. And I'll be curious to see how that works with the uh, underglaze. Because it might not. It might be too fine, the areas that are kind of like gray tones. And that's done through lines. So it's not that it's actually gray, you're working with black and white, and then it's kind of like cross-hatching in the image. And that means that those, those lines are like black, white, black, white, black, white, but really, really small. And I don't know if, if it'll print through, but I think there's enough contrast in that photograph of just the stark black and the stark white that the image will still show. I just don't know that it will print as photographically as what I have on there. And like I said, I left that screen that I'm using is a little bit looser than some of the screens. And that means I'm not gonna get quite as much detail. So trying to do photographic images with the silk screen, with the screen print on that scale, on the, that small, might not work. So we'll find out. So the screen's gotta dry now before I can um, print with it. I just don't wanna do, be dealing with a, like a really wet screen and paper or the clay. Uh, I don't want everything getting slimy. So. Uh, thankfully, while I was drying the screen the first time, the bathroom door was closed, and the, uh, the bathroom is about 95 degrees in there right now, so it should dry pretty quickly. Okay, so basically this is far, as far as I'm going to go with this right now. This is washed out. It is dried. Dried enough that I was able to tape out the edges where the emulsion didn't go all the way to the edge. This makes cleanup a lot easier. You don't end up with ink embedded in your screen in a section that you forgot about, and then it dries in there. And then I'm going to bring this to me, bring it to me, I'll bring this with me to class and we'll try printing some things.